Hi everyone. Scratch and LiveFX version 9.5 now officially support Open Sound Control Protocol and through that also the Elgato Stream Deck. In this video I'll show you how to set everything up. Let's first start with OSC, short for Open Sound Control. What is that? In a nutshell it's like MIDI but much better and network based. The way it works is that any given device or software can send an OSC URL to any other machine on the network. In other words, you cannot only run the Stream Deck on the same machine that you've connected it to, but you can actually control Scratch from any other machine on the network using Stream Deck with OSC. Here's what we're going to do. First, we enable the Stream Deck as a panel inside Scratch. Next, we install a plugin for OSC into the Stream Deck app so we can program the buttons on the Stream Deck to send out OSC commands. Lastly, we install the example profile for the Stream Deck. Before we start, if you have a custom panel mapping, make sure you do a backup of that mapping first. You can find the mapping inside your user folder, which is easiest reached by clicking the log files button here on the startup screen and going two folders up. Inside your user folder, you'll find the CS underscore mappings XML. Copy that to a safe place before continuing. Now, let's start scratch and go to the system settings panel setup tab. At the very bottom, we can find the Stream Deck and enable it. As mentioned earlier, OSC is network based, so we have to specify a port that Scratch should listen to for incoming OSC commands. We'll set this to 8000 and we're done with step 1 of the setup. For the next two steps, let's head over to the support side and find the article for the Elgato Stream Deck setup. At the bottom is a zip to download. Inside are a couple of folders. Most important are the Mac and Windows folders, as they contain not only the required OSC plugin for Stream Deck, but also the example profiles to install. The reason for having separate profiles for Windows and Mac OS is that each platform requires a different OSC plugin from a different developer. We have included those plugins in the zip, but you might also find them by just browsing the Stream Deck store. The plugin we need for Mac OS is called OSC Remote. On Windows, you can just double click the plugin file from the zip to install it. Once installed, we can move on to step number 3 and import the profiles. For that, select Edit Profiles here in the drop down and then down here choose Import. Now we have three different profiles here. Profile number 3 features tray commands. Profile number 2 features printer lights only and even allows for half or quarter stops. If you happen to have two stream decks, you can put one profile onto each stream deck. If you only have one stream deck, you can use profile number 1, which combines the two other ones in the form of two pages. Don't forget to delete the profiles you don't require, or at least set the application dropdown for those to none, so the stream deck app knows which profile to pick once you start Scratch or LifeFX. Done. Now we can start Scratch and see if our setup works. In the Color FX tab, let me go to the Balance menu and hit the printer light buttons on my Stream Deck. Here we go. Works perfectly. Now that we have it all working, we could end this video right here. However, as a little bonus, let me quickly show you how all this works under the hood so you can create your own customized mapping quick and easy. Let's look at the Temp Plus button for example. The OSC Remote plugin has three different kinds of button types to add. Here we simply use the push button. The client address is 127.0.1, which means local host, so the current machine that the Stream Deck is connected to. But we can of course specify any other machine's IP address on the same network that we would like to control Scratch on. Next is the port, again set to 8000. So the Stream Deck sends OSC commands on port 8000, which is exactly the same port that Scratch is listening to for OSC commands. What a nice match! Next is the URL to be sent. In this case, if I hit this button, the Stream Deck will send this URL, OSC slash button underscore 006, with a value of 1 to the machine it's connected to on port 8000. Next, let's see what happens on the Scratch side once that command arrives there. Let's go to the settings and inside to the panel mappings dialog. As you can see, all the URLs, or buttons so to speak, are listed here and then tied to a function inside Scratch. 
like button 6, is mapped to the temperature parameter, incrementing in steps of 10. Looking at the list to the right here, we have a total of 243 URLs to use with our Stream Deck. More than enough. So when adding a new button to our Stream Deck, we have to use a URL with a number that hasn't been mapped yet. Happy customizing! Now obviously, no colorist will work with the Stream Deck only, but rather wants to combine it with his grading panel of choice. Let me show you how to do this. The mapping for any panel is stored in the CS underscore mappings XML file. So we have a CS mappings file for each panel and also the Stream Deck. What we need if we want to use both at the same time, however, is a single CS mappings file that combines the two, a panel with the Stream Deck. As you can see, the MISC folder in the zip has a CS mappings file for any panel combined with a Stream Deck. All you have to do is rename it to just read csmappings.xml and then copy that over to the settings folder for Scratch to pick up on it. Make sure that there is no CS mappings file in your user folder though, because otherwise Scratch will use that before looking for the CS mappings XML inside the settings folder. Lastly, you might wonder, what if I already have a customized panel mapping and now want to add the Stream Deck to it? For that, you will need to combine your existing CS Mappings XML with the default Stream Deck CS Mappings XML. Here's how to do that. A mappings file consists of a couple of sections. The first section basically assigns a hex value to each button or encoder on the panel. It's essentially a list of all available controls on any given panel. Scrolling down, you can find the mapping groups, where the hex value is mapped to a scratch function, followed by the text to show on the displays for every mapping group. And next comes the next mapping group, and so forth. Now, if we want to merge the two mappings, we have to copy over each section, starting with the first one that lists all available encoders. Select all the Stream Deck buttons here and insert them into the, in our case, elements mapping. Great, now we can theoretically start mapping things out in Scratch. If we also want to copy the default mappings for the Stream Deck over, we need to copy those as well and paste them here into the first mapping group. Done. We now have added the Stream Deck controls and mappings to the element mappings file. All that's left to do is to enable both the element and the Stream Deck panels inside the system settings. Here we go. As you can see, with a generic device like the Stream Deck, the setup is a bit more involved than with a dedicated grading panel. The advantage, however, is that the Stream Deck will allow you to not only map scratch functions, but also keyboard shortcuts and many other things to it. It makes for a really nice companion to a dedicated grading panel. And of course, you're not limited to just one Stream Deck, but really any number and size thereof. As mentioned earlier, you have 243 possible OSC URLs to map. That's it for this video, hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye!